So guys, last year I decided to go all in on a fully specced out M3 Max MacBook Pro and I love it. It's the best laptop I've ever used by far, an absolute beast and it handles everything I throw at it with ease. In fact, these MacBooks are so powerful that I do not feel the need for a separate desktop computer. My MacBook Pro lives on my desk in clamshell mode and the only times it leaves my desk is when I'm traveling and I need my workhorse there with me. You know, when something like an iPad just doesn't cut it, the rest of the time it stays planted firmly on my desk. But that brings us to one of the major drawbacks of these MacBooks, and that is the lack of ports. Yes, Apple did bring back some of the basic ports, and that does help, but with all the peripherals I use on a daily basis, those few native ports aren't gonna cut it. And that is where this beast comes in. This is the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1, and it fixes all of my port problems and then some. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey guys, so yeah, like I said in the intro, my main workstation here in the studio is a pretty beefy one with a lot of peripherals and accessories that I do need to use on a daily basis. And recently, I added a second Apple Studio display to my setup. And while it definitely adds to my productivity, there's no way my MacBook can run this demanding setup on its own. I've tried a good number of docks, and while some of them are pretty good and handle most of my port problems, I'd yet to find find one docking station that truly covers all of my needs and still offers a one cable solution. So I can undock my laptop for those times I do need to take it with me without having to unplug a whole bunch of cables and leaving my desk a mess. So when Ivanki reached out to me to review the Fusion Dock Max 1, I have to admit I was a bit skeptical. I mean, all of these high-end docks promise to be the one-stop shop solution, but so far none of them have truly been able to live up to that promise. But I think this might actually be the one. Now, before I I take you through all the things it has to offer. Let's just have a quick look at what's in the box to see what we're working with here. Right, so from the packaging, you can tell that this product is made for Apple. The unboxing experience feels very Apple-esque, very clean and minimal design. The tagline reads, the missing piece for Apple Silicon. So this really is geared towards the latest Apple computers. This dock will not work with your Windows PC or older Intel Macs, but I'll get back to that later. Right on top, we find the actual docking station, the Fusion Dock Max 1, and it really is stacked with ports, front and back. I'm not sure how I feel about all the ports on the front, since I do prefer to have my cables tucked away on the back side, but I guess there is no way around it when you have this much connectivity on a single device. I do appreciate that the 6K display ports can be found both on the front and the back, so that I have the choice between a permanent setup with the cables tucked away neatly on the back, or a quick access option in case I want to quickly add additional monitors or other more demanding accessories. The same is true for the audio port, by the way. There's one on the back for your more permanent solutions and one on the front if you just want to plug in some headphones when needed. There's some safety instructions and then there's a little envelope with some Velcro cable ties to tidy things up a bit. It comes with four adhesive rubber strips to stick under the docking station in case you plan to keep it on top of your desk to help it stay in place. And the instruction manual, which I hope, as usual, we won't be needing. Then there's a pretty hefty power brick, and that's a good thing because this thing will be powering the entire setup, including my MacBook Pro, so I will not be needing an additional Apple charger for that. And lastly, there's two cables, one 40 gigabits per second USB-C cable, and I will show you what that's for in just a minute, and one 8K HDMI cable, and I do appreciate that this is braided. All in all, a very clean looking design and all the ports you could possibly need. Now, the first question that popped into my head when I saw all these ports is how on earth is this thing powering all of this IO? And the way it works is actually pretty impressive. I just mentioned the 40 gigabits per second dual USB-C cable, and that literally means there are two cables on each end. Now, you'll see that this thick looking part is engineered just so that it perfectly fits the two Thunderbolt ports on the left side of the MacBook Pro. Now, built into the Fusion dock, there are two two Thunderbolt 4 chips, so when we hook the other sides of the dual USB-C cable up to the dedicated ports on the back, that opens up all the features of the other ports, both on the front and the back of the device. So even though we are technically using two cables, it is still a single cable setup type of deal because of the way this is designed. Very clever. Now, like I said, I'm rocking a dual display setup on my main desk, but the Fusion Dock Max 1 combined with my M3 Max MacBook Pro means I could hook up four displays to this rig for a quad display setup without any issues. It is important to keep in mind though, that while this Fusion Dock 4 is capable of running four displays, it depends on your computer whether that's actually an option. 
A MacBook Air M1 or M2, for instance, can only run a single display. A dock is not gonna change that. The same is true for the regular M3 MacBook Pro and the M1 or M2 Mac Minis. The M2 Pro Mac Mini and the Pro model MacBook Pros can all run dual display setups and the max models of the MacBook Pro, doesn't matter if it's M1, M2 or M3, they'll all be able to run quad display setups when paired with the Fusion Dock Max 1. So if you're looking into getting one of these docks, hoping to expand your monitor setup, please do check your MacBook model to avoid disappointment. Anyway, let's have a look at the available ports, all 20 of them, which is pretty impressive. On the back, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, three 10 gigabits per second USB-A ports, one optical audio port, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which is useful if you plan to hook up something like a network storage system and you wanna have a high speed connection to it. Then we have two HDMI ports, both capable of handling 4K at 60 Hertz and two 40 gigabits per second USB-C ports that can handle 6K at 60 Hertz. So those are perfect for my two studio displays and both put out 15 watts of power, by the way. Next to that, we have the two 40 gigabits per second upstream ports dedicated for connecting your MacBook and with a 96 watts output, which is plenty to power my MacBook Pro as well. And of course the DC in port next to that at 180 watts, since this bad boy will of course need to get his juice from somewhere. But we're not done yet. On the front, we have two more 40 gigabits per second USB-C downstream ports, two more 10 gigabits per second USB-A ports and two 10 gigabits per second USB-C ports, which can be used for convenient stuff like charging devices. And next to that, we have our SD and our micro SD card slot, which as a creator, I appreciate very much. Now on paper, this is all super impressive, but I can tell you that I was actually blown away by how well it does its job in real life. I don't just have a few SD cards and a set of speakers hooked up on here. There are some pretty demanding accessories like my Apollo Twin X, like my G Drive Thunderbolt storage drive, my media controller, and of course my two studio displays that are in turn running their own little peripherals, like my webcam. All while still having some ports available to hook things up when I need to, like my CF Express card reader. Honestly, this thing is almost perfect. And I say almost because what would have made it flawless for me is if it had a 10 gigabit ethernet port instead of a 2.5 gigabit one, which is already great, don't get me wrong. But yeah, 10 gigabits, that would make this perfect. 2.5 is great for network stuff, but we recently got super fast 10 gigabit fiber here in the studio, and this port will not be able to take full advantage of that. Having said that, there's actually an easy fix for that too. I already bought a 10 gigabit ethernet to USB-C dongle, since the MacBook doesn't have a dedicated ethernet port either, and so all I have to do now is plug that dongle into one of the free fast USB-C ports on the Fusion dock, and boom full internet speeds while still keeping the native ethernet port open for my NAS drive. Now I realize that I've been speaking a lot of nerd for a bit, and if all of this seems like complete overkill for you, Ivanki also does make more modest models like this Fusion Dock 1 or the Fusion Dock Pro 1. You can decide how beefy of a dock you need, there's something for everyone. But if you're like me and you need every single port you can get, this is definitely the one for you. If you want to try it out for yourself, there will be links in the description below. I hope the video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does help me a lot. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.